swimming pool from time to time. Yeah, I mean, you, you could train in a lake. However, you're, you're going to you're gonna need some water, are you? My point is that if you're going to fight in a cage, at least have a cage to train in, or at least get some experience to find a cage, because it does make a difference. The cage can be used as a weapon, you know, both offensively and defensively. If you're not used to that, you're going to put yourself at a disadvantage when you're actually fighting somebody who is used to it. Which is why we open the gym with a cage. I too train at a gym with a cage, and I think it's important that, that you actually seek out a gym that has the proper facilities. A cage, if you're fighting in a cage, a ring, if you're fighting in a ring, whatever you need needs to be in that gym. You need to train in the right uh, environment in order to be able to perform at your best. So both fighters getting their instructions now. So seconds on. Looks like he's been in the fight. He looks a little tired. Nasty hematoma on the uh, outside of his forehead. Yes, yeah, certainly that's from one of the elbows, I think, on the ground. It's a big, big hematoma. Okay, one more nice and relaxed. I'd be targeting that now with the right hands. Yeah, sure enough, there you go. That's swelling up a little bit further. He's got some good strikes, Kurt Walters. I like that then. Yeah, he's also yeah. quite aggressive as well. You know, he's turning it on quite nicely. Strikes. I agree, I think that's the right thing to do. He needs to get some distance to fire them shots. That's what's winning in the fight. Yeah, that's right. Um, if he is going to go for Ted, he needs to be going, up, going for it, working Ted up, pulling the legs out and getting top position. Because he has been working well from top position. However, I think. Uh, see, this is the right thing. Tommy O'Brien. Tommy O'Brien. He took some vicious knees there. Yeah, definitely. And I think he's got his nose bleeding now. But he's looking like he's been in the fight. And once your nose starts bleeding, it starts filling up with blood. The blood starts trickling down your throat. It gets harder to breathe. That's right, and it, all these little things taking the shots to the body, your nose bleeding, you're tired because it's coming towards the end. All these little things make it very, very difficult um, for you to start to impose your will. Indeed, and I think it's even worse when you're on your back, then the blood really does trickle down your throat. Starts to pull in the back of your throat. You can actually start to feel that you're choking and hard, find it hard to breathe. This all starts playing on your mind as a fighter. Uh, I'd like to see Carl working harder here. You know, he's got a dominant position, doesn't appear to be taking advantage of it. Yeah, I just... I think some of the guys doing a good job of sort of tying him up and, and stopping him from doing anything, but he's got to a point now where he should be wearing him down and starting to work some decent strength and get some good quality strikes on the ground. Tommy McGuire sitting up trying to get that gear. He's trying to get a look in the chin strap there, actually, I think. Now, if I, if I was going up today, stand up. Yeah, and don't get caught in a triangle. He's falling down into a triangle there, and it could, could tap him. Strokes it to an over Plata. Back to a triangle. Kurt is defending well. Pass. Tommy Guy still fighting for the submission. Yeah, he's facing the Kimura now. Yeah, really works for that Kimura. He's giving up his back, doing it. And Kurt Walter looking to start striking now. So excellent fight so far. I think Kurt Robson is dominating the fight. But I actually think Tommy Maguire has thrown on a few good submissions. He's got the danger all the way through. He can it's finish the fight at his time. Well, the officer's got a ten-finger guillotine going on there. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to interrupt you, Jim. Kurt Walton again firing some, some, some decent shots. And he's caught a scream for him to stand up. Saying, come on, stand back up. Yeah, he's not listening to his corner at all. Some good shots. He needs to listen to his corner. He needs his corner to turn around and say, You know what? Step back. He slammed the kicking on the floor there. And as you're saying, the front kick to the head is only allowed if your opponent is stood on his feet. In the three points of contact, if he's on his knees or if he's got a hand down for you are not allowed to kick in the head. So 
that was an illegal ball. It looked to me like a deliberate illegal ball. It looked deliberate, and you know, it, you've got to be very careful with those things. Because technically, if the referee thinks it's deliberate, a Kurt Williamson goes, you know what, I'm, I'm not prepared to fight anymore. He gets the win. Yeah. But he's a fighter, he's a true, a true warrior, and he's out there again. Oh, nice attempt to throw a shot. But Kurt Williamson's definitely got the edge of stand up. I think in wrestling. He's got some good strong wrestling. Nice knees in the clinch. Big win to that. Um, Tommy Baker is back a little bit uh, standing. Nice knee coming through again. Do you think he's starting to look a little disheartened here? Uh, yeah, I think this is good. You know, seriously dominating performance by Carl Warburton now. I think Tommy McGuire look is looking as though, you know, he probably possibly wants out of this fight. You know, he's probably got a hard to dig in, he's probably been in some bad positions with uh, John Cavana, but you know, this is where you start questioning yourself. Uh, you you've seen a few of, uh, of the, the, the lightweights in the UK. I mean we have followed them for a long time. How do you think uh, Carl Warburton stands in looking sort of in the, the lightweight top ten? He's got 5 one no record, he's looking to make that 6 one no probably here tonight. It looks fairly decent all around. I think he's okay, but I mean, Lightweight's one of the toughest divisions in the UK. I yeah, think he could compete with, uh, you know, a Rob Sinclair, a Paul Sass, a Terry Redding, uh, you know, I could list a hundred of these names off. And uh, do I think he could compete with them? No, I don't. Yeah, not yet. 